and then I, when, I, when the sting was gone, I went back because they had got me for a, you know, I had been collecting for a long time at that point. And they got a collection that I would put against anybody's collection today in terms of sheer quality of plants. Like that was that was real because I was touching all the older people that were getting out of cannabis, and they would allow me to access the, the old weird yeah, like, one off that, that one farm shit. had yeah, for yeah. that, and that made that one farm so and special like, back in the day. When they took that stuff, everybody would go to them guys. first. Yeah. Uh, so I never, I haven't yeah. been able to find The humble this. legacy. But the main point of any of these hunts isn't so much that you're going to be first. It, it's and it's not about your ego, about like I'm doing it. It's that it's you're you're sharing your excitement. That That's you're, love. It's passion. Yeah, yeah, you're hunting, and that what you're trying to do is you're trying to encourage. Like for me, I know my role because I know that I I've, I've got 40, 40 odd years here now on campus. We can't go on forever. I'm going to get old and fucking die. And so what you, what you, and I, le I learned this from this old martial artist too, and this old martial artist I met was talking about, you know, why he created this program to find the new master for his Kung Fu world. Because he said, I'm thinking about death, which means my time is coming and I have to create the future. And what I have to do is I have to help build the future I want to see. And the future that I wanted to see was that people interested in chasing their desires. Right, so like half the shit that I do has nothing to fucking do with anybody but me. All the all the projects that I talk about publicly are mine. The ones that I don't talk about are the ones that I work with with global operations because I'm on NDS, right? So I don't talk about those because they don't want the information revealed. This is from China. And and those and they're fascinating. There's so, there's to me so too. much going on internationally Ooh. that the U.S. is being really <laughs> left behind in a lot of ways with what's happening. Like not from a genetic yeah. standpoint. But from just like a global economy, it's amazing what like Jamaica, Canada, Germany, Switzerland, Columbia, South Africa. Like, we're still, we're still, oh, we're still the biggest. Yeah, Thailand's but just all, coming online but right gonna, now. They're going to collapse quick because it's usury. The American system, the American system is different because every all the drugs in the world end up in America. So Americans, if you're not selling in America, you're not selling. When you're selling to Europe, like uh, when we're moving herbs to other countries, we're moving 200, 250 kilograms at a time, and that's a big fucking load. Yeah, right? vacuum sealed, palleted. I'll show you a picture. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Oh, got pictures. This is our first one coming out. This is this picture. Uh, this is my shit. Yeah, we have some. Get out. Boom, clearing, about. clearing customs. Nice. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what that's coming from where? That's product coming from yeah. one country and moving into another legal country. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so that's a big deal, right? That's well, awesome. that's not a big deal when, like, my, my young partner Gabe was probably moving, you know, I don't know, fucking 1,000 pounds every 10 days for years out of the neighborhood. Um, when, when you know kids that were 17 that were moving 1,000 pounds at a time, 300, 400, 500 pounds isn't a big fucking deal. When Germany and Well, the big deal is it's crossing, yeah, it legally is, it crossing is, international the, lines. Oh, that's I, the I, big I, deal. Oh, no, no, I understand, Ugh. but the reality is how much money is being made. It's small quantities in these pieces. When, when Herb is moving from Portugal to Israel, when it's moving from Canada to Australia, when it's moving internally from Colombia to Europe, it's, it's, it's business, but the quantity of consumption isn't like the consumption quantity in the United States. The U.S. burns a lot of herb. If you're selling cocaine, you're selling more cocaine in America than anywhere else in the fucking world. You're selling any drug. I guarantee you we're taking more fentanyl and meth than any other, anybody else. <laughs> we're the, I'm serious. We're the drug dumpster of the world. We're laughing the rest of the world. <laughs> we're laughing the rest of the world on, on drug front. consumption, right? We're so the like, lab rats of the world. It doesn't mean that, that we own anything or are better in any way. It just means that our population is drug addicted. <laughs> yeah, our consumption is We're drug addicted, the right? We like a lot of drugs. America, man. Number one. Yeah, like, we like a lot of drugs. And... The, the, the thing is that when you move into these other places, these markets are smaller. But what they do is they let you understand the, the relationships between premises that we have built here and premises that we can see hold true around the world. Mm -hmm. And we can see regional and, and, and demographic identities that want certain things in very specific ways. If, you are, if you're messing around in certain parts of the world, all cannabis is consumed with tobacco. It's either Almost no one is. Well, that's what I was it is inter it's interesting watching that specific 
kind of usage kind of change as, as legalization comes through and the price of herb goes down and the acceptance gets better. Like, the, like I don't think you're ever going to get folks from Spain to fully give up their tobacco. It's not about that. Or their but hash. Is, Israel, yeah, well, the hash, is, the hash is a whole different thing. When place. I was in Israel, I learned the truth of this one. The herb produced in these regions doesn't produce enough wax. There's no need for the plant to create the anti-desiccant because it's too moist. And so what you end up having is, is weed that doesn't want to burn well. Was it the haze? No, that's... Um, Larry Chimes. Larry Chimes. The weed doesn't want to burn well. And so what I did, I, I said, and I, every place I travel to... you want to roll like, that up? I have them, I have the, the, the people in the kind area of this take stuff. me into the local world how, so how I, does can, this, I can see the shit that's real. Strong. <laughs> strong, yeah, this does the trick. It, it is I, the, like, I like to keep myself to like three bong hits, and if I do any more, that's when like I start to get into that like... Real anxiety, like heart palpitations. What I do with my life. What I, I, I guess <laughs> yeah, I get, I get so high on some hash that I, I, I was doing some hash research. Yeah. Where, like I was, I was doing reading and I was looking for rosin lines. Can't look at people in the eye. Oh can't find God. your words. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. I was taking. Can't do hard. math. I was trying to think about how, what a heat up, and I was questioning my ability to function at that level of like, do I have the ability to actually use the tool? And I'm laughing because. Oh, I have the ability to fucking take on what either part. And I had to like get myself emotionally stable and I was cracking up so I'm like, oh I'm fucked up right now. This stuff is real. And then I went in the garage to go get my tools and then forgot why I was there and then started to question, I'm lost. And I'm like, no, I'm not lost. I'm lost because I can't find my fucking tools. What do I do now? Yeah. What do I do now? I it was love funny. when I do that and I get to like, I'll go from one room to the other and I'll just be like, fuck, I don't remember where I was supposed to come here. And then I'll have a good idea to go into a different room to do something else. By the yeah. time I get into that room, I'll also <laughs> forget. And I just keep going from like room to room. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Not getting oh, fuck. anything done. Yeah. Yeah, those, those high yeah. terpinaline strains they give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for letting me play. Pleasure, man. Yes, uh, yeah, 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 respect you. But you know what? But if, if we would answer, we would. I'm mean, on a fucking tangent. But if we no, if, if you if never we, do that. If we were to go back to the root of the question of what should people grow, I don't even remember what the question. Oh, yeah, what, what should people grow? Look at this. No, I, what I, I just remember where we were. What was it? Well, who should grow? What should a farmer grow that's grown for other people, or what should like the average backyard farmer? Grow? Well, the average backyard farmer has any as the most options they've ever had in history because right. seeds are legal now, so the ability for you to, to access seed stock is phenomenal. And so what you what you want to do as, a, as an individual who wants to experiment in cannabis is you want to be able to say, okay, what is it that I want this cannabis to do What am I looking for? Yeah. Yeah. What am and I then, looking for? What is my need? I, and then ideally you would look for someone who is doing the work in a similar climactic situation as yourself. So I know that if I'm... Seeing, or at least have the data to be able to yeah, it help it inform helps, your... It helps if, I, if I'm going to go into... I have a greenhouse. It'd be nice if you were doing the greenhouse work. Because then what I know is the stock you chose worked in that higher humidity environment. If you worked in... You said you were doing outdoor. It lets me know that it's resistant enough to the forces of outdoor where some rainfall and some wind is... It's not going to fall apart on itself. You know what I mean? So, and, and then what I would recommend for, you know, the average individual is to, you know, get some diversity in what they're doing. And, and if you have, uh, you know, six that you can do in your yard and you have six that your neighbor can do. Trade. That gives, yeah, it gives you a possibility of 12. That's, an, that's the, that was the funnest part back in the day is like trading with your homies yeah, like, hey, I did it, this. It, well, it allows what did you, you also do? to produce Or like auntie share. or uncle come through yeah. and they're like, man, I got this old cross from forever ago. Yeah. Yep. And that, that way what that does, it lets you enjoy, you know, the cultivation process. And it allows you to, to steer in the directions you want because everything's oh, it's choosing clear. your own adventure. Yeah, yeah and then you like, and then what you do is you go online into forums or you listen to podcasts of uh, people that are about it, and then you start to be able to make connections with people about hey, they, they, that seems to be where I'd like to try and enjoy those flavors. So I, as a specific case study, my friend in California. So I was like, look at this menu of top dog haze, hazes and haze okay. crosses. And uh, let me know what you might want to run. You say, could you find out which has the best? So he's trying to decide, like, do I do long flowering stuff for the California market? So he said, could you find out which has the best structure and is not crazy long on the flower time while still having that real haze smell and high type? 
I know that sounds like a unicorn, but as a grower, that is what I am looking for. You know, it seems like if you go like haze in, into like like a, a chem ninety one, right? Because a little longer, not like like a chem four, which is a little shorter. And you can go into that into like like an F two. You can pull out stuff that's containing a little bit better blood solidity, and the the high is a little bit more rounded because most people, when you get right down to it. They don't really know what real equatorial is like. What they want is they want uplifting. But when you give them something that makes them question their fucking validity, they don't like that. They <laughs> and they're like, looking at it in a jar like, what is this? They is this don't, weird? They don't like that shit, right? And like, I just know. So it's a very certain type that likes this. And, and I have to play with it at the right time, too. Meaning that, like, I mean, it's pharaoh weed. It's primordial. This yeah, is like know this is the building me... blocks of all of it. Like. Oh, this is foundation herb, mm -hmm. and what we what we know is that you have to match it to the right time. And what I know too is from like fucking with the Colombians, their view on cannabis is one of that when you go into broadleafs, it, it pollutes your cannabinoid system with adulterants that prohibit you from uptaking narrow leaf cerebral effects to the maximal advantage. And so they recommended to me, this was an old Colombian dude that was a collector, and it was killer to talk to him because he collected everything from the Americas. His collection was all over South America, Central America. He was the only person I ever met that went that route, and he lived in Colombia. And he and I uh, get together. Oh, this is Malibu guy's name. Oh, Malibu guy. This is, <laughs> this is, this is, this is fucking like Colombian Jorge. And, and, and then, but this guy was... Baron he, he was, yeah, 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 he was giving me an education about how they saw the relationship between the products, not from lab point of view, but from human point of view. Yeah, experiential. Yeah, and cultural community. Yeah. Like the, that's what that's what like the in, most interests me about like world like global cannabis populations is the cultures that have grown up around them and how those cultures have developed independently. From like one, even like you go to like parts of Africa, like one village yeah, or another styles. village, we'll have but slightly all, different but variations. They're, but they're really the same in terms of people that burn herb yeah. in general are a little cooler. Like in general, but pot, pot smoking takes <laughs> away. Yeah, like there's never been a place, no matter where I go in the world, that I don't notice that something about herb is a community. It, so, it softens everyone's edges. Softens everyone edges. Where like alcohol, like, <laughs> like, like, like <laughs> turns, turns it up, up to yeah. 11. But you were saying about the top dog stuff, that, you know, like, because really when you're talking about like these piffs and stuff, a lot of that was really like northern like fives, hazes. So you had a little bit later hazes. Yeah, they laid the, they, they laid these because you can't cultivate any of these true hazes. Those are like the modern. Those are a little bit more They're domesticated. The modern, yeah, they have to yeah. be never, 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 You know, I think it was like you know three to five percent is what you want the Northern Lights influence to be. Oh shit! Oh real. Yeah. Do we have another battery? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I'm sure you could edit it, splice I, I it in. Just, uh, <laughs> like jeans splice it, just don't crisp them. <laughs> they can crisp in so much more nowadays. So, yeah. The crisp is just wild. The whole gene editing is fucked too. Yeah, uh, it's a whole another level. And they're, every day they're they're taking more larger and larger snips. I've got a good backup track too. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. And and where we go with that? Oh, we were talking about um, the, 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 yeah, and, and bringing and bringing uh, bringing these uh, broadleaf genes in to make them workable indoor, and then it just came down to selection, and the the foundations of some of these modern hazes that you see in almost all things are either haze A or haze C. I mean, that's it's really like there's only those couple cuts that got released into the world at any quantity that everybody copied and followed. Yeah, we've been playing with the like the haze terpenoline dominant stuff for a little while. Mm -hmm. Like a lot more like kind of like the train wreck end of things. Mm -hmm. And train wreck's like, interesting too. Like that was it, bringing it, it like a nice bud structure. Yeah, that, like yeah. The, there's a visual appeal that train wreck had that was the, stunning. The hella jelly is like mm -hmm. is like the modernized kind of like hazy like with like some jam jelly notes up front. I don't think I've smoked a hella jelly. I'll have to check. You got any with you? Yeah, I got some in there. We'll let let me go burn a joint of it. Yeah, yeah. Because I heard some good stuff about the hella jelly too. No, it's just, it's just beautiful. And it looks like a like a beautiful sativa. It's a long, fairly long flower time. 
but short for a sativa. Defined, defined fairly long, like, like 84, under 100? Well under 100. Yeah. Well, well under 100. It's totally commercial, commercially viable. Yeah, like, if you're like, like You could harvest it in like October. It triggers really early. Oh, oh nice, nice. So it's like yeah, an early yeah, trigger yeah. time, long flower time. Totally, but totally. But the stretch is all there. Yeah. So you still get these monstrous like yep. spears of jaw forming. Yeah, that's the issue with like, what I, when I learned when I first started working with Hayes' Indoor, was that I learned that if I ran him at a 12-12, what I got was 70 days of transition <laughs> and then 70 days of flower. Yeah, because it's those few minutes that really make yeah, it. Like they yeah. almost want like on 11 On the equator, or yeah, I run, them, I run them yeah. like 10. I yeah. go 10-14. Go to flower, please I flower. I set them. <laughs> and, then, and then once I set them, then I can either bring up the cycle a tiny bit or I can leave it as it at. But I otherwise, love flowering them outside because you can figure out the figuring out trigger time. Yeah, I trigger, so cool I trigger them indoor and then bring them out. If you can reel yeah. back that trigger time, you can get some really nice sativas to finish mm -hmm. like by like a normal like Northern California harvest time. Yeah, we used to. I used to spend more time doing that shit just because, you know, you're freaking on your own little fucking thing. But I used to set up all the plants and then run them on what was the light hours I expected at these times in order yep, to get a yep. finish that I chose. So I knew if it took me 70 days to finish it, I had to go back 70 days to Subtract this day. 70 days from... And then say, what's my trigger time yep. here? And then I would set the trigger on the, in the rooms and say, okay, what triggers at this lighting? And because we, you know, we learned... See, doing that kind of work, though, yeah. like, with, like working with trigger times, you can create strains that are like, or varieties that are, you know, they work on the equator in one way. They work in California yeah, in a yeah, different way, yeah, and they tools. can work in Canada. Yes, right? they're tools. As long as they trigger early at, enough. At the right like, amount of time, yeah. you can fit them into a range. We with varieties now that is, they'll flower under 19 hours of light. Mm -hmm. Under 24 hours of light, they're totally fine, vegging away. Totally. 19 hours, full flower. Quick flower, too, like six weeks. So like being able to take that, those kinds of traits and the like sativas and bring them up to Canada or the northern... Like, would be incredible. Yeah. You know, yeah, it no, opens up yeah, the market. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to play around with some of this Lebanese work. That uh, Bob's work with that Lebanese, that red leb cut into his puck was just so. The, the quality of that flower was phenomenal, and I was like, "That's a hybrid," <laughs> and it just made me maybe get kind of caught up in Lebanon again for a second. And then I realized I had Lebanese stock chilling, and I was just like, "You know what? Let me let me see if I can bring some of these early triggering genes in." So that I can start having stuff that's coming in in that, you know, first of September, that's when it's finished. And that's how the Willie G's Lebanese was. It mm -hmm. would trigger early, it would bring it would come in early. It was a lot like this as far as the nose and some of the structure. But. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, there's there's you gotta go that's the whole thing is that with what I learned from any of these big open like when I'm looking at populations of plants that were grown in fields, because they're taking whole crop. They're not worrying about like outlier profile. They'll select outliers and make sure those seeds make it back into the seed batch, but they catch as much as they can so that they're always getting a diversity of survivability. Oh, totally, because they're one, getting, year, one year to but, the next. Yeah, but you're getting a homogenized yeah. profile because you're blending everything. We don't do that here. And so I just know that when it, families, I always what, felt like family groups. That's yes, like, yeah. yeah. And so when That's I go, when you go to the different villages, it's these different yeah, family yeah, exactly. groups that you're What they every, steered, yeah. Same gene and for pool, what but, reason, but steered. One valley is slightly mm -hmm. different than another valley. And, do they irrigate? What kind of mm -hmm. dung do they use? What's their what's their what's their what's their soil pH? Yeah. Like all this weird Slight little even cultural uh -huh. backgrounds and stuff. It's amazing. Yeah. So, cannabis is such like a fixture of like human culture it's like, it's astounding I, like that's what my greatest wish into the future is that everyone really realizes like how deep our connection has gone with this and why because there's so many different things out there that like have treated different populations for different reasons that we can't even like begin to scratch the surface of understanding it yeah, because we're trying too hard to understand. They just consumed and used. Well, we want to crisp it selected. and put, in, put a bunch of THC as yeah, much THC, yeah, as, much in THC as possible. As possible. And crisp, crystals on crisper top out, of crisper out. I want to I say the gene that that is that, that's that's controlled for, for for try to get rid of that gene. The gene that, that's involved in this, get rid of that gene. My whole problem with with CRISPR tech, and it's the only thing I have issue with. Like I know why they use it, and it lets you do some really incredible manipulations. That and they just start. What's well, a great tool well, for research? EU. Like, well, the EU just said CRISPR food is okay. We're not looking at CRISPR as as GMO, and because it's really not GMO, because you're not adding a dissimilar organism to the genome. But what you're doing, though, to me that I that I worry about with cannabis specifically is, for as much when I when I was I got it was in the hospital a couple of years ago. When I when I was I got out of this coma, the ICU staff told me that they said, you know, they go, you have that best set of lungs we've ever seen in the hospital. 
They said, you obviously never smoked a day in your life. <laughs> and, I, and I looked at her and I was like, I just didn't have the heart to tell her just how wrong they were. <laughs> but it also let me realize, because in all these years we've been wondering, like, what are we doing to ourselves at the level of consumption we've had? Well, when you've been smoking weed for 40 years and you were smoking a lot of weed, my lungs shouldn't have this level of quality, even though I'm an endurance athlete, right? So I, I spend my time doing endurance athlete shit. Um, with all the smoking I'm doing, it should be hindered. But they were like, the quality of your lung as we examined you in this ICU was unbelievable. And so what I know is that nobody can smoke cigarettes for 40 years and have no lung issues. And you're gonna tell me that cannabis has any less tar or any less volatile well, it's compounds? Shape. It's the shape. It's, 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 I, to me, it's other, it's other genes that are present that create an effect that somehow negates the cancerous properties yeah, from forming. So MIT figured this out like a few, like a decade ago. Um, it was a, they were researching the difference why people were getting cancer from tobacco mm -hmm. smoke and why they weren't seeing that the same in marijuana and, and what, smoke. And what was the shape of what? Uh, the sh actually the shape of the tar and how like the molecule of smoke, the molecules that are in there, how they're shaped. And in uh, cannabis, they're shaped like, you know, like a, a die from like a, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons, like a, like, like, like eight, ten-sided die, or 32-sided oh, die. Yeah. Like, it was like it was like a dodecahedron or whatever. And then the cannabis was shaped like, or uh, sorry, cigarettes were shaped like sickle. Gotcha. So tobacco is much more, more irritating. Actually, embeds itself in because your, of that because of that property because compared of that. to the tar. So it's a structural. Thing. Totally. It's amazing, and so because there's actually technically I think more toxins. Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. There's herb is toxins. herb is herb is yeah. more more toxic, and, and we have no filtration in it. And I mean, but it just doesn't it just doesn't go on the inside. It, it doesn't seem to bind. And so for that's me, that's why they say smoking together is bad. But there's oh, new yeah. research coming out saying that that's not necessarily true. So I worry about CRISPR just because because what I know is that, it, and it's the same reason why they worry about it with food, is that the scientists on one faction say there's no issue, but the other scientists who are just as educated on the other mm -hmm. side say, yeah, we have concern. So you don't really know where to stand with genetic well, Sometimes we're turning things on and off and we don't really understand why, and it's what, not, and it's what not the just, collateral damage Well, it's be. not just a switch either. If you've got linkage and drag, and mm -hmm. when you're doing like, what it's I'm not learning. a switch, it's a chunk. It's like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's you're it's a taking snip. books out of the novel. Yes, and you're also not understanding you're the relationship that novel. has in conjunction with other genes that really only like machine learning can tell you. Because what you're able to do is look at 100,000 samples and say, you know what, the machine says that this gene combination is what is occurring, not just that one gene in loci. We, yes, we've located the gene that, that controls a certain thing, but when we manipulate it, we don't get the, the expected result, which means that there's modulating effects from other genes that we aren't aware of because we don't see the pathway. And so when you're, that's really what machine learning does in breeding, is that when you're, when you're using AI, you're able to ask the computer, what patterns do you see that are consistent with the plants we want to use? And that now gives you a true pattern to look at genomically. Which, which parents should we use in the breeding project and why? And, why. Yeah. and we can do it mathematically. Do we see this sequence of alleles that is yes, be an auto, it's, dictated to an autofly? But we go right? from looking at, like we can look at like a thousand, a machine learning operation can look at 900 million. Mm -hmm. So you can go up to 900 million combinations to understand the so nuances. First we have to learn that. We have to be able to decipher well, the, the book of 900 million. But the, but the computer at least lets us see the patterning. Yep. And so what it says is that Look the ones here. that we chose, for some reason, they seem to have this patterning. We can go through a bigger population and pull that out and move them forward and we go with success, which is really how we breed anyways. It's just you're using tools, just like we're using genomic breeding to figure out what alleles are present and what aren't present. Machine learning lets you look at a billion different locations and say, what is the bigger pattern? Mm -hmm. So we're still working on little patterns because that's our level of understanding. Yeah. But the machine can look at much bigger patterns and it starts to be able to really create some incredible potentials of what if. You know, when you're using- What is this? Why are we seeing this grouping? And, and, well, and, and, and also what's possible yeah. if, we, if we ask the plant, when you look at the gene patterning, what is possible from these parents and it starts to be able to tell you and help you understand what's the potential outcome 
See, we can only predict it based off of what we believe is an outcome, but when you're able to put a billion combinations in, you see oh, a lot. You're able to look back generations and find patterns it, and things that it, yeah. would be impossible for a human to ever perceive. Yeah, yeah. you know, no one can do it. We're not, we still have the ability, but because we have. Because it'd be generational knowledge, yes, multi-generational yes, yeah, knowledge. Yeah. And like, you know, based on in the cannabis right now, like we're working on, it's all generational stuff. There's been some books, there's been a lot of like new research coming out, but a lot of the understanding and knowledge is still just word of mouth, generational. Oh, what totally. you learn from your folks and what your oh, folks yeah, learn yeah, from their yeah. folks. And, and half it's wrong. So half the stuff. Oh, and half is, yeah, bad observation. Yeah, yeah, or it was yeah. like, no, you know, so totally I, anecdotal. So <laughs> I know, I know what I see and I know what I do. And then I, I'm, I'm fortunate that I get to be around people that are, that are really brilliant. So I'm able to like, you know, learn from their experiences. But the further the, down the rabbit hole we go, the more I know we don't know. Yeah, the more, like, yeah. The more it just doesn't stop. I remember and, with some uh, mm -hmm. geneticists we were working with really early on, they came into cannabis and they were like, man, we're really like, we think we're gonna identify these problems. It was like some like disease stuff. It was like, it was like CBD production, THC production. Like, we're gonna knock these out, we're gonna be done. And then they got into it and really quickly the, <laughs> the head geneticist came back and was just like, Man, there's like generations work of like worth of work to do on the cannabis genome from like a practical perspective, and it's gonna take like this is gonna take so much human endeavor to actually like bring us to modernize cannabis the way we've we've done with every other crop that we grow right now. And and when and the and the the fun part about that one too is that when they're talking about what they're gonna do with cannabis, they're still looking at it as a plant, measurable by numbers. And it's the only plant we really play with that has so many complex relationships with us that it almost, you have to have human evaluators. Mm -hmm. You can get a population neck down, but I don't think you can neck it. It's rare that I see the lab hand me something that is better than someone who sifted it out of the bedroom. <laughs> yes, it may have better traits that are, are valuable in how we produce it, mm -hmm. where it's you know, quicker growth, but better resistance. It's all about but the, the selection process, so like the people that I get herb from that I play with, I work with global monsters, I smoke weed from people that are growing it out of their basements. <laughs> you can't really deny it, you know? And so it, it, I know that there's going to be this nexus at some point, but... Do you think, it just, do you think it, it'll come together or, or do you think it'll fractionate? Do you think there'll be this like pharmacopoeia, like pharmaceutical level production that's just like kind of this insulated little bubble and then there'll be like kind of like all the like cosmetics and like vape pen, even the vape pens just like kind of super isolate for really restrictive areas and then there'll be this like just this niche that is kind of like the rest of like the, the normal smoker, like the well, experienced the, smoker. The normal smoker though, the, the, the thing is what I believe is that when you create the toolbox, then it's available, right? Do you think so, people will come together or think they're gonna be like multiple well, the, well, markets? Well, you're gonna have, you, oh, you're gonna definitely have multiple markets, yeah. but what, what I mean coming together is that the small operator, just like right now, right? Small operators getting buried alive, small operator can get access to TC, get their plants clean, held and banked, you're, you're benefiting from, from a technology that save your life. Mm -hmm. That's not bad. So to me, that's the modern science of micropropagation going along with small people. And you are also now able to go take classes so you can learn how to do your own preservation. So if you actually, just because you cut a meristem and, and, and fucking propagate it doesn't mean you got rid of the virus. So like it's a little oh, more complicated. One cell in there than in, that and the one other, cell winds up traveling through a whole branch. You have one branch. Yeah, you have to, it's, it's, whole, it's complex. A plant that's right? super clean and but, one branch could have the virus. But the point is if we, if we know we got a clean plant in that we went through, like an elite clone in other, other industries is a two year stress test, right? So mm -hmm. two years this plant was fucking stressed and nothing happened. Okay, we can call it an elite. <laughs> if we had an elite bank where you could go and get access to an elite piece and then you could take it and, and, and buy access to it like you can any other plant. Yep. And then you, you'll be able to keep it at your house in your little in vitro setup so you know it stays clean. And you were able to use it as a hybridizer where they'll, to me there should be plants available that people can access that impart specific qualities, meaning earlier finish, higher resistance to pests and pathogens. So what you can do now is take things that you wanna work with and you utilize the genes that, that come with this as a dominant trait and then it allows people to be able to work and, and produce products for their own needs, 
for smaller yeah. niche operations. To me, that's where the, the, the knowledge comes together in that we can use the tools. Once you get machine learning, you'll have first advanced machine learning that only larger companies can afford. Then you'll be able to go and get an advanced learning fucking app and you'll tap in through the cloud to someone's shit. What I know is that you used to have to do sex testing through the lab. Now for 1100 bucks, we can go pick up uh, an essay test and pick up the reagents and we're able to test for, for sex for about five bucks a test mm -hmm. if you want to spend 1100 in, in a day to learn how to do it. That's not bad. That's science and cannabis touching. So each one of these things influences Progress. the small, yeah, it influences a small producer and it makes their lives easier. And when we get into the genomic end of it, it allows us to start to take a look and figure out, you know, which, which plants are we playing with that are on opposite ends of the spectrum. So if we want to see true heterosis without having to inbreed and stabilize two concurrent lines and then cross to get the outlier, we can actually look through the world and say, if these two things collided, we would get natural heterosis because they don't share any common genes. Mm -hmm. That kind of shit is what I'm talking about. The true, the true F1 hybrid. Yeah, and, well, yeah. the ability. Well, we, they've already got them. Yeah. It's just that no, for, yeah. for small people, like the, a, the small growth. You can make it in your backyard. Yes, yeah. yes. It's all, it's, it's where do I think this stuff is going is that you're, you're creating a crafted. Everyone's like, no one's growing pot anymore. More people are growing fucking pot <laughs> than ever grew pot before. It's just they're not able On to. On the same level. Yeah, yeah. They, they're growing two plants, four plants. They got a two light tent, four light tent. They got a little backyard. They got their friend's spot. They got a little underground. Like it's fucking prevalent. And, and all that development, all this craft, the true craft development, hobby cultivation, you'll have so many people cultivating that if you created platforms that allowed people to benefit from the platform, then you would start to see people being able to get into breeding work where you were able to say, look, this plant we released as a breeding male and, and you can utilize it for these purposes, but it's not good here. And then there's another one that's released. And pretty soon there's gene banks that you can work with to play around and steer so that you can take and get your desired effect and your desired mouth and nose, but with something that works in your latitude and your specific impact, you know? To me, that's that's like what I'm excited about. That's where the future holds. Yeah. With it, like, yeah, with gene banks now accepting cannabis, exactly. cannabis genetics yes. and actually doing like, you know, proper, you know, standardized research on them, and then banking them, and then holding it, and then having it identified as, hey, this is this, like it's here if you need it. Yeah, we take we take plants. There's a bunch of stuff coming out of the EU right now, which are mm -hmm. like huge banks that have kind of now, you know, they work in you know dates and tomatoes and you know other other industries and have now started to you know steer into cannabis and it's super interesting to see the work they're doing because it will all it, it's all ag it's mm -hmm. just the problem well, and to see, and to see yeah. like how where other ag is and the big disconnect between oh. cannabis and other ag it's like other ag is like no we just want protein units per yes. square yard yes. or per acre yes. or whatever grain yields of this That's it's like no right. no the cannabis if you go that you can go that way you can go you know, we just want to grow crystals on sticks and, you know, really quickly you're going to lose all the special things that make this joint, this joint. Yeah, yeah. Because the flavor, this was, he did some large population sifts and what his, the, the kid that, that did this one, Josh, his deal is um, uh, inclement weather. So he's over in Washington on the coast okay. in a greenhouse, right? Okay, okay. So anything I send to Josh population wise, it's got to be resistant. It's gotta yeah, be. well, what it does, it lets it lets me have some botrytis, yeah. fucking mold city. <laughs> and so if it can the make ground, it, you look, if lift it, up a leaf, there's botrytis. If it can yes. make it through his his place, it can make it it can make it anywhere wet. Is he in the peninsula? I, I believe so. I just know he's right. close so enough to. The peninsula is one of the hardest places on earth to grow. I've he's known. just in a place that's rough, and so when he we says, hey, he says, hey, out of a thousand, out of a thousand plants, this is the one that didn't have any issues right. and had the best qualities in addition. I'm like, I'm about it. That's, what's and that's what it takes, those localized like, mm -hmm. pressures.